so companies kind of know this, but they don't like they don't they don't articulate it like this, and they don't they haven't taken it as seriously as they should. Um, and and so I think I'm already starting to see this now in 2016, but I think in 2017 you're going to see many more companies kind of view the world in in this way, uh, where um, you know, and they'll be in a rush to build as many, to, to put as many machine learning projects into play as possible, because each one of them can optimize their business. And really, what this looks like for a real big company, you don't have three projects or five projects; you have hundreds of projects, right? Hundreds of projects that are optimized, automating things, making de making better decisions, uh, reducing risk, and each one of them is contributing to the bottom line. And the very next year, uh, they take this further, and executives start getting judged by some formula that's a combination of how many uh, opportunities um, do they find to do machine learning in their business, how many do they actually execute on, and how good are those solutions. Um, I really, this might be a bit of an exaggeration, but I really do believe that even non-technical executives are going to be judged on their ability to drive machine learning projects um, and to, because it's going to be the only way to compete. All right, so those two things add up to this. Uh, an arms race, but does anybody know who the guy on the left is? Yeah, yeah Nikita Khrushchev, yeah. Um, so m this is a different sort of arms race, but um, in 2018, the machine learning arms race will start between companies, right? You've kind of already seen, everybody's in a rush to hire data scientists, but this is nothing. Like, you're, you're gonna see, as soon as, as soon as more and more people buy into this picture, you're gonna see a massive increase in spending in a rush to hire data scientists, software engineers, people who can um, uh, manipulate data, data engineers, to be able to do as many projects as possible. And the, the thing is, if, if one company does it, in industry, let's say insurance industry or banking industry, if one bank starts taking this stuff seriously, then all the other banks have to take it seriously or they can't, they, they'll die. They, they can't compete. Okay, how many of you are deep learning fans? How many of you uh, know something about deep learning in the audience? It's okay, I won't make fun of you too much, it's all right. No. Um, so, Although they're successful in many ways, today's deep, and this is in 2019, today, today's deep learning neural networks ultimately disappoint and fall short of the hype. I'm sorry, but if you're thinking that deep learning is going to can just solve every, all the world's problems, you're gonna look like this little boy. Why is that? So here's a picture of what neural networks looked like uh, a long time ago when they were first invented. They said, yes, this is just like the human brain, like this picture, right? And so now, what are they saying? They say, okay, those neural networks, you know, from 20, 30 years ago, um, maybe they were too simple for the human brain, but now we have these. And those are more like the human brain. And, uh, and now it can do that. And, and for real, there, there's been a big breakthrough. If anybody doesn't know what the breakthroughs are in deep learning and what it can do, just, you know, search on YouTube, watch a video. I mean, it's, a, it's really incredible. Um, but the human brain, this is some complicated diagram of the human brain. It's much more complicated than even this, believe it or not. There's more to us, more to us than this, this. So the reason that there's gonna be a limit to how far deep learning can go is because there's a lot of stuff about the human brain that we still don't understand. So it's not gonna be able to fully replicate what humans can do. For you deep learning fans, don't worry, you'll have your revenge in I think the year 2020 something. You'll see, there's another slide. Um, in 2019, the definition of a model will expand to include everything in between raw data and the predictions. So um, some people think machine learning, data science, it's all about the neural network algorithm or the random forest algorithm. That's the, that's the sexy part, that's the cool part. But the reality is you're not gonna do a project in, uh, with just a neural network. The data, data is all different data sources. You gotta bring them all together, you gotta clean the data, you gotta fe feature engineering and so on. And then this little tiny thing here, that, that, that's the neural network. But that's where most of the sexiness and most of the focus is today. 
So in the future, too, not too far in the future, I think everybody's going to realize why don't we expand the definition of a model and put, put a lot of effort into the entire process instead of just trying to tweak uh, an extra 0 .00001 performance out of your gradient boosted tree or your neural network, which is where most of research goes. I think that, I seriously, I, I mean, I haven't measured it, but I think that like 75% of academic research and stuff is going into this right now. Can we get that extra 0 .0001 accuracy out of the out of the gradient boosted tree? I think that's what everybody's working on. Um, and I, I view this, so I mark this as a breakthrough. And you'll see as we go through the presentation, there's different breakthrough points in the in, in future where um, if you're looking to work on like a a fundamentally kind of game changing research or maybe build a build your own product. Anything marked with a breakthrough is a good idea to kind of to start working on because it could have a really big impact. And okay, in 2019, by the way, I'm going to ask quiz to see if anybody knows who this is. But if, if in 2019, the U.S. adopts the European Union law guaranteeing to have the right to have a human explain any algorithmic decision. So when you apply for a credit card, and they they, they say no or they say yes. They, they have to explain it. Anything at all that's a decision made by a computer, the European Union has already passed a law, already European uh, EU has passed a law that says that you have the right to say, exp I want a human to explain this decision. So in 2019, the US will think it's a good idea to pass that law too. And um, so d does anybody know who this is? Madoff, yeah, right. So, I mean, you guys are maybe famous. Ukraine's famous for corrupt, you know, people. But let me tell you, he's he's the best at 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 being a corrupt criminal. Uh, I he on the list of the people who have like stolen money from countries and and people, uh, he has eight times. He stole eight times more money than anyone else in the history of the world. So, sixty-four billion dollars he stole, some, somewhere around there. Um, the difference is in the U.S. we put him in jail. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he, he didn't take my money. It's a good question. I, I, I'm interested to know. I, I imagine so. Okay, and as a follow-up to that, the very next year, a law requiring algorithmic decisions to be explained is extended to human decisions. So I say, well, if the computers have to explain themselves, then maybe humans should have to explain themselves. And, uh, and, and this, what, what this does, and, and then as humans start to try to explain their decisions, they realize, well, the machines do a much better job of it. And, uh, and so that, that kind of speeds up our adoption of machine learning. Okay. In 2020, most machine learning models, you just deploy once and there's an, enough technology around them that they monitor themselves and they, they will update themselves and so on. Um, that's like an American culture thing. It was like, and this is like a globally uh, you know, culture thing. So I figured I would get a couple giggles out of the second one. Okay, here's another breakthrough opportunity. And this is, this is a fundamental um, breakthrough that is important for us to be able to move forward with machine learning. So um, in the year 2021, um, most databases, so machine learning, data science starts with data. Data gets stored in databases. In order for machines to just automatically do data science and machine learning, there needs to be more metadata around the data. This is, the this is what humans provide now. So things like every single cell, picture a data table or a database, right? Every single, every single little piece of data needs to have, needs to have uh, metadata about when was it written, uh, what is it connected to. Um, and, and so ha having databases um, adhere to the standard of having all this metadata about it that, that autom automated uh, machines can use to learn, to learn from, um, it really enables uh, you know, more automated solutions. Um, we at DataRobot trying to just automate data science, you can only take it so far 
because there's human knowledge needed. Okay, in 2021, the number of machine learning algorithms built and deployed in a single month exceeds the, the global human population. Think about that for a second. Um, that's not my done, I think that's Paris or something. Um, so that means that either everybody's gonna have to become a data scientist or uh, there's gonna be a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of machine learning problems that are just automatically created and deployed um, by, by machines. So machines will be kind of like doing a lot of the machine learning and so on. I, I will bet money on this, okay? Like, I, like this one I'm absolutely sure of, if anybody's skeptical. I will bet anybody who wants to bet me on this, I'll bet you money. We already have customers that are building thousands of models per month automatically through an API. So like, I, I know this is happening. Um, in January, anybody know, hear of cognitive computing? Anybody hear of this? So in January, this is another bullshit term. In January, data scientists finally agree on what cognitive computing means. In February of 2022, 2022 whatever cognitive computing refers to is universally determined to be pointless. And everybody moves on and don't, they don't discuss that much anymore. Um, machines can translate business problems or questions stated in natural language into properly formed data science problems. So now I'm not talking just like a, a query, like where you say, uh, you know, search, uh, find me, you know, all the men who are aged greater than 50 or so. And I'm, I'm talking like you, you phrase a problem. I want to predict who's going to, what, what, what customers are going to leave me. You say that and the computer can do the rest. Okay, here's the revenge of neural networks. Breakthroughs and understand, this is 2027. Breakthroughs in understanding the human brain lead to a third and final breakthrough in neural networks, aka deeper learning. Um, and at this time, neural networks uh, surpass all other forms of, forms of machine learning. There's no need to do any gradient boosted trees, no need to do regressions, everything. All machine learning is done with neural networks in 27, 2027. So you see I struck them down, but then I bring them back up in 2027. Ah, here, this, this one's very, this one's deep, so pay attention. It's like, might be hard to follow this one. So usually when you build a model, you, we, when you're doing data science, you, you get some historical data and you train a model on it. And then that model learns from the data and then you take what the machine learned and you apply it to future data. And it's done in two steps. So in the future, that won't be the case. If you wanna make a prediction about something, anything, the, a model will be created at that time, in real time. So think about that. I, okay, I wanna predict, will this person default on a credit card loan? Or will this person crash their car and, in regards to insuring them? So it'll look at the characteristics of this person and it'll build a custom model in real time, right then and there, that then it uses to, um, to make, make a prediction. And the, this, this technique is supplemented by huge pre-trained neural networks that, are, that, 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 that provide features as inputs to these, to the, these algorithms. In 2033, 70% of all crimes are predictable. However, regulators prevent law enforcement from utilizing these predictions. So nothing really changes. All right, this is, this is, this is, the, this is the last point in our journey. This is, 2040 happens to be the median year. This is the agreed upon year that the singularity will happen. Hopefully most of you know what the singularity is. And at this time, the way I, the way I phrase it is real AI, re, real artificial intelligence is born and, becomes and looks back at history because it has access to all the information and it becomes furious with the human race for all the bullshit companies in 2016, that's this year, claiming to have artificial intelligence. And also that stupid movie that, the, that with the teddy bear from like 2001. Um, and, and there's Zuckerberg talking about artificial intelligence. Like they have it like, it really pisses me off, seriously. <laughs> and then as a result, this happens. So the, the end of humanity is caused by these companies right now claiming to have artificial intelligence. So if you're gonna start a company and claim to have, realize you're contributing to the, the end of the world here. Okay. And uh, that is the end of my presentation. Hopefully it was somewhat entertaining. Diaco you.